knowing that through our own efforts, through our own wisdom, that often we end up doing things that might make sense to us, but in the process hurt ourselves and hurt those around us. And we pray, Lord, that you would just come and surround us with your presence and your love, that you would open up our ears to hear what you're saying, that you'd open up our hearts to be filled with your love, that we would be transformed during this season of Lent by your loving presence. In Jesus' name, amen. I always got a little bit split as I look at this season of Lent, as I look at Ash Wednesday, because I think sometimes there's a, a danger that we end up doing exactly the opposite of what the whole season of Lent is all about. The whole point of the season of Lent is to focus more intently upon God. But what do the disciplines of Lent sometimes cause us to do? Don't they sometimes cause us to be even more intent in looking at ourselves? That sometimes we get so focused on, this season I have to work extra hard to remind myself how bad I am. This season I need to look extra hard to pick out every little thing I'm doing wrong. This season I need to come up with a detailed plan of how I'm going to fix myself so I can be a better person. This season I'm going to do what's necessary so that God will forgive me, so that God will accept me, so that I can go to heaven when I die. For you English teachers out there, which person am I talking about? First person, right? I'm a chemistry person, so I don't know, don't understand all that stuff. But pretty much, we spend so often these penitential times in the process of thinking that we're showing honor to God, we just end up intensifying our focus on ourselves. It's sort of like your grandma when she had you over for Christmas. She wanted to have the whole family around, but she was never actually in the dining room because she was in the kitchen the whole time preparing the dinner. At least my grandma. That's anybody else have a grandma like that? So by the end of the time, you've had a wonderful dinner, but you didn't spend any time with grandma. And I think sometimes that's what we do with Lent. We don't have a wonderful time; we have a miserable time. But at the end, we've had a miserable time, and we haven't spent much time with God. We sort of get a little bit of both. So, my question tonight is, what would it look like if we actually focused on God during Lent this year, rather than just focusing on ourselves? So I think that's what Jesus came to do. He came to a society of people who were so worn down by their traditions, by their rules, by all the religious stuff that they had to do, that they've been so focused on, what do I need to do? How can I be better? How can I follow these rules? And he came to show them that there was something other than themselves. Because they were basically the reason they were focused so much on their se themselves by the time Jesus came is they'd lost track of that close presence of God, that love of God. And Jesus is inviting them to think differently. So when he says, repent, believe the good news, he's not saying feel miserable about yourself. He's saying, trust that God is here. Trust that it's not about you anymore. It's about Him. Trust that it's not about what you're doing to try to get God's attention, but that it's about God coming to get your attention. It's about God coming to get access to your life. So it's not an invitation during this season of Lent to find your way to God, but it's an invitation to find out what happens when you give God access to you. And it's not so much even about what do I need to do to save myself, but it's about inviting God to get a hold of me so that God can use my life to be a blessing to others. And somehow in the process of giving God access to my life, letting go of my own agenda, that I don't end up losing my life, I end up finding my life. I end up gaining my life. So Jesus is inviting his disciples to think differently to see differently, so that instead of seeing God as distant or frightening, he wants to show them a Father who loves them. He wants them to, sh to show them a God who that they want to draw close to, rather than hide from. And that's something that I like about David, because King David, even though he lived in the Old Testament, the whole point of his prayer was because he valued the presence of God so much. Don't take your presence from me, God. Because that's what brings meaning to my life. That's what makes my life work. Don't take your presence from me, but forgive me so that I can proclaim your goodness to others. 
so that I can show the world your goodness. That's the whole point, is that we want to be restored to the presence of God and to have that understanding of God that when we are broken, that it doesn't push us in upon ourselves and our own shame, but it pushes us towards God and God's goodness and God's grace. So Jesus is inviting us to see the world differently, to see God, to see his goodness, to see his love, and then become part of what God is up to, because they're not running away from God anymore, but they're seeking to be close to God. I think in these next few weeks, I invite you to come on Wednesday nights. We're going to be looking at the book of Romans. In Romans, the whole first part talks about how we're all on even ground, we're, we're all broken, we're all sinful. And finally we get to Romans 7. And in Romans 7, Paul basically, well there's different interpretations, but basically Paul is getting to the point where he says, no matter how hard I try to fix myself, I still sin. So Romans 7 ends up with Paul saying, now who is going to deliver me from this body of sin? And the answer to that question is, thank God for Jesus. So what we're going to look at is Ash Wednesday tonight, we're going to thank God for Jesus. To say we can't deliver ourselves. But then the next five weeks we're going to be looking at, so what does it look like because of Jesus? How does he invite us to see differently and live differently? Because Romans 8, after he says, thank God for Jesus, it goes on to say, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And he spends all of Romans 8 inviting them to see differently, inviting them to look at life differently, inviting them to look at themselves differently. And that's the kind of repentance I invite us to do this, this Lent. Because he's going to invite them to see that they don't need to be motivated by fear. They're not servants anymore, but they're children of God who can be motivated by love and freedom. He's going to invite them to see that their identity is not servant anymore. But as the Holy Spirit whispers in their ear, reminding them who they are, that they're children of God. He's going to invite them to see that the purpose of their life isn't to save themselves. But he's going to invite them to see that all of creation is waiting for people who are able to live in relationship with God defined by God's love, that we're meant to be part of the solution, not just someone who's trying to save our own skins. He's going to invite us to see that God doesn't want to remain a mystery, but that the Holy Spirit reveals God to us, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, that even when we can't figure out what we're supposed to do ourselves, that the Holy Spirit takes the things of God and reveals the things of God because God wants us to know Him, to understand Him. And finally, Romans 8 is going to show us that, well, if it's not about us, if it's not about fear, if it's not about saving myself, if it's about being a blessing to the world, it ends up by having us look at, so why are we afraid to go out and take some risks? Because if God is for us, who can be against us? Nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. So now that there's no condemnation, now that I know who I am, now that I'm free, I'm led by the Spirit, Let's go out and learn what it looks like to live a life that honors God and serves neighbor. Because it's not about saving myself anymore. That's what we're going to look at during Lent. Is to learn how to think differently. To learn how to see differently. To go past that, oh my oh, miserable man that I am, which many of us would want to spend Lent focusing on. To focus on, but thank God for Jesus. Because in Jesus there is now no more condemnation. Let's learn how to think differently. Let's learn how to really repent. To repent past just feeling awful about ourselves. Because repent just means to change the way you think, the way you see reality. Often we repent to the point of asking for forgiveness, but we don't repent to the point of seeing and experiencing the goodness of God. So let's repent a little bit further this year. Let's repent into learning more about Jesus, learning more about His grace. We're going to sing about that with the choir a little bit later. Let's repent to the point where we live as children of God. Let's repent to the point where we're not afraid to take risks. Because if God is for us, who can be against us? So this season of Lent is not about us. It's not about me fixing myself. But it's coming to that point where I realize I can't. The end of Romans 7. I can't, but Jesus did. 
And now the rest of the story is there's no more condemnation. What does that look like? <coughs> Amen.